talk just can you talk about the play you designed when Paul threw up that three pointer? Well, we just wanted space. You know, our our thought was take it to the end of the clock uh, because it wouldn't give them a lot of clock coming back and then attacking space. Uh, you know, Paul is a shot maker, so he made a shot, but. Um, you know, they, they, that was a tough call for them. Do you foul or not? You know, with the time differential, um, we didn't know which one because it was one of those things where you really didn't know which one. We just kept telling everyone, no one stand near each other because that way they would trap. Uh, just stand space. If we can get it to Paul, great. Uh, if we got it to Jet, we were going to run pick and roll. Um, and that's basically what we said. Were you, surprised, made a shot. were you surprised they didn't foul? It was a tough one. Honestly, we debated it. That's, I, you know, I think. Half and half, you know, our guys, um, I said I'm trapping probably and going for it and probably fouling, but it's it's a hard one, you know. It's, that's a tough one. That two and a half, you know, that's, that's a tough one. Our number is three, you know, where we won't, but uh, we've never had a two and a half, you know, so, but our number is three. You have to assume a longer shot would obviously take off even more time. Yeah, exactly. Well, we're, you know, we're thinking a miss, ball rolls on the rim, you know, rolls off and, and that's what I honestly, when the ball was in the air, I was just thinking, hit the rim, you know, and, and fly, go somewhere. You know, that's that's what I was hoping for. So you were disappointed? I was disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> From your perspective, Doug, what went wrong? What were they doing? We right stopped now? playing. We stopped playing. I, you, you can see me in the third quarter. It just, it's back to back games, and I told our guys that. You know, I hate as a coach when you're telling them that and they're all agreeing with you, you know, after the game, but we still did it. Uh, that's back to back games where we were playing. Really good basketball. We're pressuring. We're getting up the floor. We're playing in space. Where our offense was early clock, and we get into the third quarter in the middle of it. And all of a sudden, they're scoring in five seconds. We're walking the ball up the floor, and, and what I, I'm trying to tell like that's not who we are. We can't be that anymore. We just can't. We can't play that way. And um, you know, and then we start. I thought we got a little tight at times. We we're throwing the ball away and. You know, but that happens when you turn it off, you know, and uh, let go of the rope, as they say. And I thought we did that, uh, and that's back-to-back -back game. So we won the game. Uh, we beat a heck of a team, and I'm very happy with that. Um, but, you know, in, in my mind, we can be better, much better than we were today. Another night where your bench came with lots of yeah. contributions from different guys. Yeah, that, just everyone is scoring. You know, uh, you, everybody who played scored a bucket, and when you look at uh, the, the guy that stood out to me was Jason Collins got three points from seven picks. When you think about it, and uh, one was a four-point play, and the other one was a chance to be a four-point play, and all he did was set a pick. You know, and you know that's great for our bigs. We, if you set picks, you can score two now. You know, and uh, it was terrific. Is it really refreshing to see him do some, do a lot of the intangibles, and actually have some statistics to kind of back that up? Uh, you know, I don't care about the statistical part of it. He's just been doing it all year. Every every time he comes in the game, it's funny. My oldest son was at the last game. He said, golly, every time Jason Collins comes in, something good happens. And I said, yeah, Jeremiah, that's really a wise statement. You know, <laughs> but it is. And, and he's right. He just he doesn't do bad things. He just does a lot of good things. Up to, this, up to this last stretch, this is really the first time that somebody made a run back at you, and yeah. they did finish off with some plays. And yeah, you had Avery getting that charge. Mm -hmm. Jason Avery getting, getting the charge. charge. Uh, I mean, that's we we forgot our formula, Murph. We allowed them to get back in the game, and then we caught ourselves at the end. But does does that speak to the maturity of the group you have right now? I I, I really don't know the answer to that. Mm -hmm. I, I if you want to say yes, I'm all for it. I'll take that <laughs> as an answer. Um, you know, it's tough because I was so upset that we allowed it, but then we did gather ourselves. So I'll probably have a better feel about it after I watch the game again. Doc, you've used the term fool's gold before, but three-point shooting seemed to build that lead very quickly, especially yeah. in the first half. How do you look at the three-point shooting tonight? Well, it's important for us now. You know, we're playing small ball. If you're going to play small ball, you either have to get layups or threes. You know, the only post guy really is Paul at times, uh, Jeff at times, and Kevin. So uh, that's how we're playing. Uh, we're looking for quick ones. We're looking for quick shots. Uh, we're trying to increase the pace. And that's where, you know, the last two games I was upset because we had the pace both games, and they didn't want the pace. And then we stopped playing and allowed them to, to get their breath and play. And uh, we're not big enough 
to slow down and play with the Clippers. I mean, we just fell right in their hands. Do you think that's one of the reasons why Jason Terry the last few games really seems to kind of be, be shooting the ball really well, kind of in his rhythm, so to speak? Yeah, and I think everybody's touching the ball. Jason's touching the ball a lot. We're running a lot through him uh, at times. You know, Vinny did a nice job. You know, people rarely put their number one defender on Jason. They put it on someone else. And I thought that was really smart, you know, putting Bledsoe. That really affected us uh, on, on Jason because you know, he's reaching and grabbing, and um, it's a good move. Down the stretch, it looked like Blake did not want to go at Kevin Roth. Well, he tried. Uh, you know, they, uh, I, I know they came out of that one time out. It was for an ISO with Blake on the nail in the middle of the, on the free throw line, and, you know, they were trying to go quick. Uh, Kevin beat them to the spot, and, which was great because they were trying to get Kevin out of the game, which would have been smart. Specifically, how have you seen our fellow?